Welcome to five tips to have more intimacy in your relationship. Now, physical intimacy is great, but is it at the core of every relationship? Not necessarily. Stay tuned to the end to find out how to have all kinds of intimacy in your relationship. The biggest challenge I see, and I want to be really clear, is I'm going to stereotype and I'm going to use some broad generalizations. I'm going to use certain genders and certain stereotypes, but any of this can apply to any gender, any stereotype, and any kind of intimate relationship. Well, one of the biggest things I hear is women will say something like, oh, he only touches me when he wants sex. My question for you is, is this true? Are you only being touched when you want sex? And for others, are you only touching when you want sex? Often when people say this, it's not because that's actually the case or the truth. It's that underlying it, they are not feeling seen. They're not feeling heard. They're not getting what they want in their relationship. Right? It's kind of dried up like it has here in this desert. And they're looking for that water to nourish themselves and nourish the relationship. But instead it comes out as a judgment or an accusation of they only touch me when. It's not true, right? Often their lover or their husband is just trying to reach out and connect in some way. So a small touch on the back, a small touch on the shoulder, a hug can be misinterpreted as something more because we've gotten unaccustomed to actually creating connection and intimacy in different ways. Then the next thing you know, one person feels rejected and the other person is frustrated and the whole relationship starts going downhill in all levels of intimacy. Have you ever misinterpreted a touch before? That's why it's so important to do these steps and build emotional and intellectual intimacy in your relationship too. Because we need more than one type of intimacy in order to create a strong relationship. So step one, find a way to create emotional intimacy. So how do you do that? Schedule some time, look each other in the eyes. How long has it been since you've really sat with your partner and looked them straight in the eye? and maybe just touch their hand, giving them a moment to be really connected, really there and talk about things that are emotional. Here's how I've been feeling about life lately. Here's how I've been feeling within myself. Here are my wants, my hopes, my dreams, my desires. How long has it been since you've made time for that kind of connection in your relationship? And when we build that emotional intimacy, it nourishes the relationship that we have around us and always. If you look at this saguaro cactus behind me, it's probably over a hundred years old because it has one branch. One of the things that keeps this cactus strong and upright is that it's got a root system. It only goes four inches to six inches deep, but it spreads out as far as the cactus, cactus is tall. So that creates some stability. So as you create emotional connection, and step two, as you create intellectual connection, as you open up the communication, that provides a strong base for strong relationship. But it also has a taproot that goes deep, deep, deep into the earth. Two, three feet sometimes. And this is what pulls up the water that nourishes it. So as you're looking at creating this emotional connection in your relationship again, also acknowledge where were the roots of your relationship? How did you start out? What made your relationship fun and exciting and vibrant? Why are you together in the first place? Start looking at all the ways, all the times you had a really good time together. Reminisce and see how can you bring that back into your relationship now? Make some strategy for that. Step two is to open communication about what you really need. So if you feel like you are not getting what you need out of the relationship, if you feel like you're accusing your partner of things, you're not feeling loved, you're not feeling supported, you're not feeling heard. Perhaps you're trying to raise kids and you feel like everybody needs something from you at work, at home, and in your relationship, sit down and open up that communication. Use the words, I feel, not you're always, you're always touching me. 
You're never touching me, right? Instead, how do you feel? What do you want? Open that level of communication with your partner and allow them to do the same. What do you need to feel wanted, loved, appreciated? I know I've been spending a lot of time with the kids or I know I'm really sensitive to touch right now. How can we create more connection? So step three, build that intellectual intimacy and connection. What are your thoughts about the world right now? What are your viewpoints? What have you been thinking about? Have a conversation that stimulates the intellect. Maybe even have a small debate about subjects that are challenging and open your mind, right? There's also, if you don't like intellectual conversations, maybe you talk about something spiritual or something creative, but look at different ways that you can make different types of intimacy happen, spiritual, physical, intellectual, emotional, creative, right? You can Google it on the internet. There's a bunch of different types of connection depending upon what website you're looking at and what you're exploring. But find the ones that fit with you and your partner. And then step four, make agreements on something you both want and need in your relationship. So what does that look like? Maybe you have a five minute conversation with each other before you go to work in the morning. Maybe you have a date night. Maybe you make an agreement about how you communicate, how often you give hugs, what else you need. Look at the love languages. If you've ever heard of the five love languages, different people give and receive love in different ways. So what do you need to do to create that feeling of intimacy, but also of being loved, wanted, appreciated? Do you need more touch? Do you need time? Would you like gifts? Would you like an act of service? Would you like them to do something for you? How do you need that? And make an agreement that you can both work towards in order to have the relationship that you want and bring it back to something strong and connected for yourself and for the others. So as you create that connection and those agreements, it's like creating that taproot, right? Like digging down for that water that's going to nourish you even during the dry season. So you've got different types of roots, right? You've got the one, the breadth of the different types of emotional intimacy, and you've got the agreements that really anchor you in, right? And that tat root in the saguaro cactus also prevents it from toppling over. So when it is full of water, it doesn't just fall over from its own weight. And it, like I said, and it nourishes it during the dry season. So those agreements can do the same for you and your partner, your significant other. So create those agreements and make some of them fun and playful. Find different ways that you can really increase all the different types of intimacy, all the different types of connection in a way that you both love, feel good about, feel passionate about. And step five, Increase physical intimacy. And I'm not just saying in the sexual realm. Some people are more sensitive to touch than others. Some people want more. Some people need more. Some people are super sensitive to it. And it's overwhelming because there, or there's been a history of trauma around it. So how can you have a conversation about making touch safe? And what do you need? And how do you communicate when there is a desire for physical touch? Maybe it is that one of the partners wants sex and the other person doesn't. How do you communicate? How do you say yes to your partner, but maybe no to the activity right now? Because when we're in a good, strong, healthy relationship, we want to please our partners, right? We want to give in a way that our partner feels connected, but we also want to receive in a way that nourishes us as well. So can you have that conversation without being triggered? Can you say like, hey, I would really love to right now, but I know my alarm's gonna go off in two minutes and that's gonna distract me. Or hey, I cannot stop thinking about this project. I just need to write this thing down first. Can you please wait? Or you know what? I am so exhausted emotionally right now. I just don't feel like I can and give you everything that you need and it would be draining to me. Can we set a time tomorrow? Can we give each other foot massages instead? 
we go out for ice cream, right? It doesn't even have to be touched. So how can you say, yes, like I wanna spend time with you. I hear this is what you need. Unfortunately, I can't give it right now, but I still want to give you something. I still want to create that power in our relationship. Wouldn't that be amazing? Instead of one person being like, oh gosh, all they want is sex and the other person feeling rejected and unloved and unwanted. What kind of relationship do you want? So I encourage you to create these agreements, commit, even when it feels scary, even when it feels vulnerable, because if you honestly want that strength in your relationship, trust, respect, and vulnerability are going to be key. And just think about this 400 plus year old cactus out here in the desert. There's gonna be changes. There's gonna be years where it rains a lot. There's gonna be years where there's drought and it survives. Do you wanna survive in your relationship? If you do, it doesn't hurt to take the steps. I'm Dawn Bennett. Thank you so much for watching and I'm helping you clear all the emotional baggage in your relationship so you can feel love, connected, and strong. So until then, be loved. Please subscribe and share. I'll see you next time.